All right, welcome. Today is lesson 16, Irrational Numbers. What's our objective class? Get ready. Irrational Numbers. rise test it's like a sage test the same thing um, they're gonna ask you which one of these is irrational and you'll be able to know in fact today you'll be able to know which numbers are irrational and which numbers are not rational or rational okay? an irrational number is a number that has a non-repeating or a non-terminating decimal so we're gonna practice that what are the two qualities of an irrational number get ready Non-repeating or non-terminating. So let's make sure we know what it means to, to repeat and to terminate. So repeat means the same digit goes along, or it means a chunk of digits repeats. So that's repeating. Terminating means the decimal stops, meaning like 1.0, there's no more decimal places there. One eighth, you could divide that, and that's a terminating decimal. It doesn't keep going. Three is a whole number. There's no decimal. 200, there's no decimal. So these are terminating. So, what is non-repeating and non-terminating look like? We've all seen this Pi. Pi is non-repeating and non-terminating. So look at that. Are there any chunks of numbers that repeat, like we see a string of numbers and it's the whole thing repeating? No. Okay, so it's non-repeating. What do we say, class? Get ready? Non-repeating. Non-repeating. And then it has this dot, 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 meaning it keeps going forever, so it doesn't terminate. Think of the word terminate, like if your parent got terminated from their job, that means they stop working. So terminating decimal means it stops. Well, this decimal doesn't stop, it goes on. Therefore, we call it non-terminating. It goes on forever. Okay, non-terminating. What is it called? Get ready. Non-terminating. Non-terminating. So anytime you're typing a number in your calculator, you're testing it out, you're dividing it even by hand, if you get a decimal number like this, it's irrational. What is it called? Get ready. Irrational. Irrational. Here's a way that I make sense in my mind. I think, gosh, there's no pattern in this number. It just doesn't make any sense. It's irrational. You're saying, man, that person is acting irrational. Like maybe you say they don't have a pattern to their behavior, they're irrational. So that helps me remember an irrational. There's no repeats and it never stops, it keeps going. So let's try our calculators. I'm going to teach you how to type in the square root of 2 and figure out if that, what kind of decimal that number has. So on your calculator, you've got a second function on the top left is blue. You're going to need that. And then you're going to need this button because above it, there is a square root above it. It's blue. So to access square root 2, you're going to first hit second, then the x squared button. It's on the left side about in the middle. And that'll access the root button. So on your screen, it'll put a little root there. And it says, well, what do you want to take the root of? You say 2. So you type in a 2, and then you hit equals. Now, not all calculators are like that. My calculator in college, I would hit a 2 first, then I would hit my root button. So if you have a calculator like that, play around with it, see if it is 2, then root or root two. and two. Wow. After you hit enter and you get a decimal number, raise your hand so I can see who's got it. If you're having trouble finding your root button, turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor. All right, I'm gonna call a student. What decimal number did you get? Let's call on Connor. Um, I didn't get it. You didn't get it, Bo? 1.4142135.62. All right. Do we think that the number keeps going, or do you think it stops at 2? Keeps going. Keep keep going. It's going to keep going. Your calculator just ran out of space. But will you turn to Connor, show him which button you push to get that? Okay, so dot, dot, dot. Now, your calculator had to round it at 2. Whatever happened there, we don't know. But there are more numbers. Is this irrational? Not if you think it's irrational. Does it have any repeating chunks? Does it stop? Does it terminate? No. So because it's non-repeating, 
non-terminating, it is irrational. What do we call it, class? Get ready. Irrational. irrational. Let's try a square root of three, Jasmine. Uh, a way to, like, a way that I found helpful to see if it terminates or not by using the calculator is write that number down and then hit the times button and then like put the exact same thing in and then if you get the same number that you started with before you square rooted it, then it stops there. Okay, I want to follow on Jasmine's comments. We're going to use that today. She says, well, I, I got to the two. Well, what if I wrote it down on a piece of paper and I, and I typed it in my calculator exactly what it said and if I times it by itself, am I going to get exactly two out of it? You won't. Because there are more digits. Your calculator is storing those digits in memory. That's there. It just can't show them to you. If you could type in every single digit out to infinity, yes, you could get an exact two. So the only way you can multiply this to get two back is you have to leave it in your calculator. Don't clear it out. Just hit this number and then hit the squared button and it will give you back a two. And we're going to do another problem like that later. Emma. On the Scott the square root of three. All right, square root of three. Do you want me to say it? Yeah. 1.732050808. 808. Okay, and then it ends there, dot, dot, dot. Now, there's no pattern here, but then about there, it looks like a pattern. I'm going to say it's not. It's just randomly happened to be that, but it's going to still be different numbers. How do I know? Because I know that three is not a perfect square. It has to be irrational. Right? So it's non-terminating, non-repeating. This is irrational. What do we call it if it's non-terminating, non-repeating? Get ready? Irrational. Irrational, non-terminating, non-repeating. Can we graph these numbers? Well, root 2 was 1.41. Here's 1.5. So 1.41 is about there. So there's where root 2 is, about 1.4. And then one point, or root 3 is about right here, is 1.7. Root 3. So they have a place on the number lines. So that's how you can graph them. Calculate them, find out where they're at, and then plot them between your segments. Irrational, the root of ir, well, the root is ratio. But ir means not, so it means you can't make a ratio out of it. It's not rational. Here's a sample test question from Rise. Which one of these numbers is irrational? Which one is irrational? We're gonna take a vote. Which number would be non-terminating, non-repeating? All right, let's take a vote. If you think it's A, raise your hand. If you think it's B, raise your hand. If you think it's C, raise your hand. If you think it's D, raise your hand. All right, those of you that raised your hand on C were correct, but not the whole class did, only like a third of you did because you weren't totally sure. Let's figure it out. That's zero. That's two. This is four. Can I make a ratio out of that? Mm -hmm. So that's rational. Can I make a ratio out of that? Mm -hmm. That's rational. Can I make a ratio out of that? That's rational. What's this one? Who's got this one? Uh, Ethan. 2.82847125. But we're going to assume, because your calculator ran out of the room, it keeps going. Non-terminating, non-repeating, is this irrational? Yes. yes, this is the correct answer. That is the only irrational number. Jasmine. Uh, with that question, I used my resources and I looked over at that board and I looked along the line and eight wasn't on it of the squares over there. Okay, and we're so going to talk more about that. She's right. Like, see how you have to use the calculator? The, the root button? Yeah. Is anyone else not sure on their calculator how to get it to work? So, and you've got a different one, so I'm going to have to show yours. So, on this one, to get the root button, let's do root 8. You're going to go second, and then the radical button is right there. So right it's there. like the exact same, but it's, it's a different It's right color. behind the x squared. Type in 8, and then enter. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. Which one is it? So it's right on the x squared button. That's right. You got a question? Do I need to yeah, I need to okay. All right, so let's continue on. Real numbers is what we call both the rational and the irrational numbers. All right, slant. Yes. Slant. Slant. Thank you. I just noticed some of, a lot of you are in your calculator. Set your calculator down. We don't need them for a second. Okay, rational and irrational numbers make up all of the real numbers. So all of the numbers you've ever learned about up to this age, this point in math, they're all real. 
Okay, so your fractions, your decimals, your non-repeating, your repeating. Let's take a look over the chart. Jen, do you want to spin that over the side? Actually, no, don't. Okay, so you've got counting, whole, integers, rational. Remember, your rationals are like three to three, so it can be a ratio. Three halves, that's a terminating decimal. 0.25, that's a terminating decimal. But now we've got our irrational numbers are high. Our square root 7, our square root 43, our non-repeating, non-terminating decimals. Well, we need to take all of our rationals and all of our irrationals that makes up all of the real numbers. So what's not a real number? You're not going to learn about that till about your sophomore year in high school. You know even? Well, kind of. Kind of. Um, this is a non-real number because it can't exist. So they gave it a name, they call it I. You learn about it in high school. That's called an imaginary number. It's not real. So don't worry about that. Okay, so real numbers can all go on a graph. So here's the real number, one half, it goes here. Two thirds would go here. Square root two, we said, was about right there, right? Root two. Three halves would be right here. And root three would go about here, right? They all have a spot. They all have a value on our number line. And so we could take a list like that and order them least to greatest by figuring out their decimal and placing them between our number line. So I'm going to trust you guys can do that. So what's an application? Yesterday we did a square tile and the area was 100. Remember how it said 100 in the middle? And we said, oh, well, since I know the area is side times side, we figured out that it must be 10 and 10 on the sides because we figured it'd have to be the same number times in by itself to get 100. So how do we handle today where the area is 2? What number, call it S, would I times by itself that would equal 2? If you think you know, raise your hand. Okay, Ethan, what do you think? It's the, give me the square root of 2. He says the square root, wait, you can have a length that's equal to the square root of 2? Yes, you can. You can, so, so in other words, let's look at the map. Area equals side length squared. Well, we know the area is two. So some number squared equals two. How do we find that number? You take the square root, you do the inverse operation. So we're gonna square root two to get our side length. And we would throw some units on there, we'd say centimeters. I know it's disconcerting to some of you to go, that's not a length. Well, it is, we figured it out, it was 1.41 about. So that's totally okay. So we square rooted to find the length of the side of Jasmine. But do we want to change it into a fraction? No, don't need to. And you can't really with irrational numbers because they can't become a fraction. All right, we're going to do some flashcard yeah, exercises. You're going to tell me, is this number irrational? You're going to say yes or no. Is this irrational? Yes. Yes. Yes, it's pi. Non-repeating, non-terminating. Is this irrational? Yes. 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 Is this irrational? Yes. yes. How do you know? That uh, board over there. Okay. It's, it's prime. Odd, prime numbers. Yeah, prime numbers. Uh, can, it can 14? 14 is not prime. Is 14 irrational? Yes. Type it in your calculator real quick to be sure. <coughs> okay, 17. Yeah. Non-repeating, non-terminating. So yes, this is irrational. Next, is this irrational? No. No, because no, it equals four. That terminated. Is this irrational? It is. Yes, it is. Type it in to make sure. Is it non-repeating, non-terminating? Yeah. Non-repeating, non-terminating. So yes, this is irrational. Is this irrational? Yes. No. Uh oh. I typed it in my calculator earlier. Yeah. It is. Yes. It's yeah. Crazy. <coughs> so type it in. Type in your root 14, and look at the decimal. That's how we know because I knew there was a few in there going. I don't know how you can tell yet. I'm still, still learning. Just trying to get the pattern here. It's is it non-repeating? Non-terminating. Yes. yes. Do you have a bunch of random digits that just go out? Yes. yes. Yeah. There's no repeating chunks. It doesn't go three, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't stop. It keeps on going. It fills your whole calculator screen. So it doesn't matter that it's even. It matters that you can't take a perfect square root of it. Rational? 
or sorry, is this irrational? Yes. Yes, yes this is irrational. Is this irrational? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, this is irrational. Is this irrational? Yep. Yes. Is this irrational? No. No. Yes. Is this irrational? No. No, because it's three. All right. Is this irrational? Yep. Yes. Is this irrational? Yep. Yes. Is this irrational? No. Yes. 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 I don't have you guys yet. You haven't figured out the pattern yet. Is this irrational? Yes. yes. Is this irrational? Yes. No. No. No, because it's <laughs> two and two terminates. And I can make it into a fraction. Is this irrational? No. Yes. 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 Is this irrational? Yes. yes. That was my root two. Is this irrational? Yes. yes. What is the square root of one? One. Oh. One. <laughs> no. One terminates. One over one. It's a, it's a ratio. So it's rational. Okay. Is this irrational? No. No, it's not. This is rational because it's a ratio. Any fraction is rational. Is this irrational? No. No, because it is a ratio. Is this irrational? No. No. Is this irrational? No. No. Is this irrational? Yes. Because we're back to the start. Okay, let's look over here. On our multiplication table, Jasmine said at the beginning, look at my diagonal line. Remember our perfect squares we talked about the other day? 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. These are the only numbers on this whole chart. If I take the square root of them, I get a whole number. Any other number on here except for 9 and 4 and 4 and 9, any other number on here, if I take the square root, it's irrational. The only rational numbers on here are the square roots of those numbers because they're perfect squares. They have a terminating answer. They have a terminating decimal. Okay? All right. I hope... We understand. We're going to find out through problems A, B, C, E, G if you understand irrational numbers. Page 105.